Dragon in range of the space station. Welcome everybody to uh, Hawthorne, headquarters of uh, Space Exploration Technologies. We're here to unveil Dragon version 2. Uh, Dragon version 1 is right above your heads. Uh, in fact, this is the, the first uh, Dragon spacecraft that came back from orbit. And you can see the, the scorch marks on the, on the heat shield, uh, the thrusters that are fired. Uh, it's, uh, it's a real, real spacecraft. Uh, and I'll, I'll, tell you a little, I'll start off by telling you a little bit about the Dragon version 1 before showing you Dragon version 2. And wh when we first created Dragon version 1, uh, we, we didn't really know how to create a, a spacecraft. We'd never designed a spacecraft before. So while there were, there were a lot of interesting technologies in version 1, it does have a relatively conventional landing uh, approach. So it, it, it it throws out parachutes to land in the water off the coast of California after it comes back from the space station. Um, and it does have a, a life support system, but not one that can last for a long time or, or carry a lot of people. And uh, so it, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a great spacecraft, and it was a great um, proof, of concept, con proof of concept. It showed us uh, w what it took to bring something back from orbit, which is a very difficult thing to do. Um, and usually when something comes in from orbital velocity, it, it, it burns up in a big fireball. So, but, but going from, from Dragon version 1, we wanted to take a, a big step in technology, really create something that was a step change in, in spacecraft technology. And, uh, and, and some important characteristics of that are the ability to, to land anywhere on land uh, propulsively. So that's one of the things that Dragon version 2 will be able to do. So you, you'll be able to land anywhere on Earth with the accuracy of a helicopter, uh, which, is, which is, I think, something that a spaceship should, a modern spaceship should be able to do. And it'll be capable of carrying seven people, seven astronauts, for several days. It, uh, it has an improved version of our Pika heat shield. And uh, it's, it's all around, I think, a, a, a really a big leap forward in technology. It really takes things to the next level. So with that, let's, let's see the... Dragon version one, we're going to do the countdown here. All right, so Dragon version two. <laughs> T minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, So let's, uh, we have a, an animation that shows you how Dragon version 2 will work. So let's roll that uh, animation.
So, that is how a 21st century spaceship should land. <laughs> um, a, a few other things. So I'm going to talk about some of the, the hardware uh, in Dragon, some of the technologies. Uh, we're going to roll those out. And um, so a, a few things I, I should mention that uh, you saw in the animation, but we, we don't have time to show you today, are the, the, there's the docking mechanism. So the uh, Dragon version 2 is capable of autonomously docking, uh, either autonomously or under pilot docking with the space station, um, or you know, with the International Space Station, potentially other things. And uh, without, the, without needing uh, the uh, station arm. So the current version 1 makes use of the, the, the Canada arm that's on the space station. Dragon version 2 is capable of of docking autonomously without uh, the use of the arm. So that, that's a significant uh, upgrade as well. Um, and although it wasn't shown in the video, uh, Dragon version 2 still retains the parachutes of Dragon version 1, so that uh, w what it'll do is, is when it reaches a, p um, a particular altitude, uh, just before for, uh, landing, a few miles before landing, uh, it will test the engines, verify that if all the engines are working, it will then proceed to a propulsive landing if uh, there's any anomaly detected with the engines or the propulsion system, it will then deploy the parachutes to ensure a safe landing, even in the event that the propulsion system is not working. And even after starting the propulsion system, it can afford to lose up to two engines and still land safely. Um, and then after the, the engines are, are started, it deploys the, the landing legs uh, for, a, for a soft landing. And it, the, so the reason that this is really important, apart from the, the convenience of the landing location, is that it enables uh, rapid uh, reusability of, this, of the spacecraft. So you can just reload uh, propellant and fly again. This is extremely important for revolutionizing access to space, because as long as we continue to, to throw away rockets and spacecraft, uh, we will never have truly uh, true access to space. It will always be incredibly expensive. You can imagine a scenario where uh, in, in aircraft, if aircraft were thrown away with each flight, that nobody would be able to fly, or very few, maybe a small number of, of, of government customers, and, and, uh, and the same is true of, of rockets and spacecraft. So uh, it, that's, that's really why it's so important to be able to, to land propulsively, land on land, um, and be able to, to then uh, reload propellant and take off again. So I'll, I'll look at, point, point out some of the, the, the technologies here. Uh, this is a, a composite overwrapped uh, titanium sphere, and this, ca this contains the ultra-high-pressure helium that pressurizes the uh, propulsion tanks that feed the, the Super Draco engine. This is the, the, the Draco engine, which is a maneuvering thruster, um, and this is essentially the same as the, the one that's, or, or very similar to the one that's on Dragon version 1. And on Dragon version 1, there are 18 of these thrusters for maneuvering uh, in space, as well as controlling the reentry, uh, the, the, the trajectory during reentry. So we have, we have a, a, you know, a bunch of these on uh, version two as well. Um, from a propulsion standpoint, the, the biggest uh, single change for Dragon version two is the addition of the, the Super Draco engines. So th this is really a super-powered version of the, the Draco engine, uh, whereas the, the, the Draco engine produces about 100 pounds of thrust uh, each of these engines produce 16,000 pounds of thrust. So, uh, it, hence the super. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and th they're in pairs, so that uh, if, if one um, malfunctions, it, its pair can, can uh, take over and increase thrust to compensate for the one that's not firing. Um, and each one is in a protective shell, so if anything goes wrong, it's contained within that, that protective in the cell. Um, this is also get, will be the first uh, fully printed uh, engine. So this is a, it's, it's printed in canals, which is a special high strength alloy. Um, and it'll be, yeah, like I said, the, the, the first time that a rocket, a printed rocket engine uh, sees flight. And then this is the, the propellant tank. This, um, a whole series of these spheres uh, are around the perimeter of Dragon V2. And these, these are, also uh, carbon overwrapped titanium, and, uh, and they, they feed the uh, Super Draco engines, which are uh, operating, the Super Draco engines are operating at a chamber pressure of about 1,000 PSI, 
and, f and fed from the, these uh, series of, of propellant tanks around the perimeter. Um, and then we also have version three of the, the Pika heat shield. So the, the base heat shield um, is, the, is the third version of our heat shield technology. The first version obviously flew on that uh, version one spacecraft up there. Um, and, uh, and, and we're now about to fly sort of version two and version, version three. Um, and w with, with each one, we're able to make the reusability of the heat shield better. So it, it, it ablates less as it, as it enters, and, and so we're able to get uh, more flights. So that's, uh, that, that's Dragon version two. Um, although uh, it'd be nice to go inside. But for that, we will need a comically fast set of stairs. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm sitting here in the <laughs> sitting here in the pilot seat. And pull it down. So the, we've we've aimed for something with the Dragon uh, version two for the interfaces and for the overall aesthetic of something that's very clean. Uh, very simple, uh, and uh, so as, as the pilot, you were able to interact with uh, the, the screens overhead, control the spacecraft, and then we've got all of the critical functions that are needed in an emergency situation as manual buttons. So that's what you see in this area here. Yep. Oh, that's all right. A little unwieldy. That, that's all a lot easier in zero, zero G, by the way. <laughs> um, so there, there you have it, uh, Dragon version two, uh, capable of carrying up to seven astronauts, uh, propulsively landing uh, almost anywhere in the world, and uh, something that's designed, as I said, to be uh, fully reusable. So you can fly this multiple times, allowing for potential dramatic reduction in the cost of access to space. Thank you. <laughs>